I think this YouTube channel is just gonna become a look what the weather in Michigan's doing today channel because yesterday was a beautiful bluebird day and today we're expecting seven inches of snow and it's gray and it's cloudy and it's cold and it's kind of windy. But today we're here at Hudson, Lower Hudson Park, I think it's called, Lower Hudson Park. And we're on a little nature trail that goes out to a uh, creek and we're gonna go do some long exposure maybe, just walk around and see what kind of stuff we can find out here. Uh, may bump around a few spots. There's a little, couple little trails that kind of weave through the woods here. So maybe we'll follow the water, like I said, set the tripod, do some longer exposures because there's moving water here. Um, yeah, just do a little walk and see what we get. So I like the way that tree is leaning over the water. I'm gonna move around a little bit and see. Um, ideally, I'd like to be low here under the bridge and shooting towards it. Um, it's just super rocky here. So it may end up going back on the bridge and shooting straight at it, but I, I'd like to be water level, I think, for this shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch out to the 24 to 105 and put an ND filter on it on the tripod and do a long exposure to get the water nice and, nice and smooth. And then we'll kind of keep moving. There's a couple more little offshoots of water going around the other way. So I think it's just so easy having the, the base camp set up to be just a, a plug and play really. Leaving the rings, being able to leave the rings on all the time and then just kind of add in the ND filters as I need them. Makes it super convenient for video or for photos um, to kind of work as I go. All right, so like I said, we may end up going lower than this, but right now I'm just trying to get some shots established to see what I'm looking at on the long exposure. Actually, I'll definitely get lower than this first. So we'll start at the top. It's always sketchy shooting over water. I've lost a couple drones this way. I don't really want to lose another camera right now. That would be less than ideal. And the rocks here are so... That feels secure enough, I guess. So, again, I use... I'm using a fluid head because I traditionally, or I was more of a videographer for the last couple of years. So I find that, um, I find that I need, how do I work this? I find that a fluid head will do almost everything that, a fluid head will do almost everything that a photo head will do besides turn to its left, which if I had an arc top, arc plate and an arc head, that would, that would be fine because <laughs> I have the L bracket, which would work great. However, for video, you just don't have the same with a ball head. You don't have the same control. So I'll, I will be switching to the Arca style plate and head, but for now I will definitely end up with a, definitely, definitely end up with a, um, fluid head over a regular photo ball head. So I'm kind of just framing this up right now, making sure my focus was on that tree. And I'm going to start with a two second exposure. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do a two second exposure at F22 ISO 50. So I, what I always do is set a two second timer so I can let go. And there's no shake in the image. That's what that looks like. Yeah, with water, you definitely want a glassier, a longer shutter and F22 is as high as I can go. So I definitely need to get a darker ND filter if I want to come and do a, a long, I think I'm gonna, 
tan down a little more. Let's see. Let's go a little bit wider. Get a little more of the water first. Let's try this. So two second exposure. On, I'm doing a four second shutter this time at f22. Like I said, to get more of that glassy effect on the creek, river, stream, whatever you want to call it. Okay. The, the problem is the sky is so gray. Let's see. The sky is so gray that it really muddles out the background and makes it a lot less interesting. So I'm going to go a little bit tighter now. I got a four second exposure, F22, ISO 50. I have a two-stop ND filter on, along with the polarizer. Let's see if that, and I, I may end up going. Yeah, you just there's not enough water in that shot, so definitely want to get more of the water because the tree is there as a visual aid, but the the cloudy water is the interesting part of the shot, I think. Uh, and I'm shooting straight up the stream. Maybe if I could find a bow in the the, the stream, it'd be more interesting or the creek. Um, okay, so we got we got a couple shots there. So I'm gonna move this before it falls. So we got a couple shots there. Um, we're gonna pack up the the bag and kind of move down a little bit. Um, again, I think shooting straight on the water makes it less interesting. A curvature it would be nice. Um, so we'll see if we can't find something there where it's got a curvature in the water to go around. And then there's something that, again, leading lines is, is always super important. All right, so I'm up here on the bridge now and I'm kind of, again, this this more downward angle, which I don't think I like as much, um, but I figured it was worth trying before I walked back and walked away from this bridge. Uh, the tree, again, the tree is very interesting because it's falling over, but it hasn't fallen yet. Um, the colors are nice, the white, I don't, again, I don't know trees, but the white against the brown bark uh, with these little pops of red for the, or whatever color. It looks like red from here. Um, it is super interesting. And there's another tree that I just noticed on this side that's also falling. We just had a big storm, so a lot of stuff's falling in the, the waterways right now. So uh, I'm going to take a shot here too and kind of see what it looks like, and then we'll move on and see what that does. All right, so I stand by the fact that the tripod's too high. So I've dropped the camera onto the bridge, still with a four second exposure at F22, ISO 50. And we'll see what that looks like. I guess that's that's much more because the water turns away. So that's much more what I was seeing when I saw this shot. Uh, I may even actually go further down to have more of a hard turn on the water. Um, so yeah, let's go. All right, so we're following one of the trails that kind of walks with the little creek off stream. And there's a lot of moving water, so it's definitely prime for a long exposure. Just have to find a interesting subject to put in focus and still. Um, these bridges are cool, but there's a lot of stuff in the way. <laughs> Maybe a nice tree would be cool or we'll see. We're gonna keep walking. Uh, the trail kind of follows it for a good bit and then offshoots up over hills and stuff, so. We'll be keeping our eyes open, but today is definitely about long exposures because uh, I feel like I've been saying long exposures for the last five videos, trying to get them and just haven't taken any. So now that I kind of got everything set up on the camera with the, the base camp and all the rings and stuff, um, we're going to try and get one <laughs> that we really like today. Uh, so yeah, let's go. So I've just popped up on this trail that apparently walks the ridge line. I've been walking down there, seeing this ridge, and I just didn't know what it was, but the trail that I was on ended, so I came up. But this is super neat. Again, we talk about leading lines, and we talk about curvatures, and how it kind of flows through. So I think this is a super interesting shot. Uh, there's a lot of moss on each side of the road, so that'll be cool. Um, so we're gonna take a couple shots here, do some wide shots, maybe some tighter shots lower uh, of the trailhead. Um, well, yeah, let's go see what it looks like.
All right, so we're coming down. I found these mushrooms. I'll show you when I get down this hill and hopefully they don't fall. Uh, but there's water flowing down here and I'm thinking those mushrooms would be a really cool subject with the water flow in the background. So I think the geese are mad I'm here, but we're gonna take some of the shots over here and then uh, go back uphill and see what else we can find, so. All right, so I'm trying a eight second shutter, eight second exposure with F20 at ISO 50. Um, we're gonna try a couple of these and maybe change some settings and keep going, but I like this shot. I like how the, the tree is coming across the frame and there's mushrooms in the in the center as a subject or off to the side as a subject. And then the water makes the most of the background and that's blurred out because of the long, long exposure. So we're gonna take a couple here and then we'll, uh, we'll keep moving on down the trail and see what we can find. Something that I like to do when I'm not getting the shadows bright enough because of the long exposure is I'll take a little flashlight like this and then just kind of highlight them. Again, light painting, but during the day it also works to get close enough that you're not in your shot and then light up the shadows underneath. So that way you're not pulling your shadows out in something like Lightroom, you're doing it in camera. So let's see what that looks like. So all I'm doing is for part of the shot, I'm taking the flashlight and I'm lighting up the underside of the mushrooms to get that light in there that I'd like to get. And I'd like to see, um, yeah, I like the way that it looks. And I like the way the water looks in the background. So we're gonna keep going on now and uh, let's see what else the trail has to offer us. All right, so we got some cool mushroom shots. Now we're gonna look for some more interesting subjects that are on or near the water. Again, these have some pretty good flow to them, so they make for decent long exposures. The bridges are cool, but they're very busy. A lot of trees before and after, or like this one, it's just such a quick turn after the bridge that it, it turns in the creek. Um, and that's kind of bland before it but maybe we'll get a shot here see what the, see what the bridge will look like with the uh because that'd be a good shot to good spot to stand that's kind of what i'm when i'm taking these shots i'm looking for the most water movement like right there an interesting subject like the bridge and having a good spot to put the tripod to get the shot and this kind of meets all the categories so we'll take a shot here and we'll see what it looks like again we had a very big storm there are a lot of trees down So I think I was right with it being not interesting enough to look at. We'll see when we get into editing, if we can't spruce it up a bit, but it's just all kind of bland. I think if there's a pop of color, it would help. But right now the bridge kind of blends in with the trees, which blends in with the leaves, which blends in with the dirt. And the water itself is even kind of brown. So it's a very brown photo. Um, like I said, we're we'll going to Lightroom, see if we can make a look and see what the photo looks like. There's just so much here to photograph. Um, it's, it's just all brown. It's all brown. The other day it was all gray, today it's all brown, but we have a lot of fast moving water and curves. I just wish I could get something super interesting as the subject that is over the water and stationary. <laughs> the moss would be cool. Um, the water's over there, so it's a straight line. So I'm, not, I'm staying on the trail a little more to see if it pops back over and kind of gets curvy again. But uh, we're gonna keep walking a little bit longer and then maybe turn around and head back to the car a different direction than we came and see what else we can see on the way back. All right, so it's starting to snow. So we need a couple more and then walk back. But 
this this tree makes a pretty cool arch and I'm hoping to see something around here uh, I'm doing some long exposure I'm, I'm gonna try and move around see what looks best compositionally but I like that the I really like that the water curves here and I like that the arch is also there um, so I need to find the best composition here and then uh, just take some take some photos and see what it looks like all right so right now I'm on an eight second exposure uh, f22 again and ISO 100. Um, I think that the native, I have to look it up, but I think the native ISOs are 100 as the lowest. I know that the Sony's go below that, but I believe the bar above and be up, uh, above and below it is because it's a official, artificial style um, ISO. So I'm gonna try and stick with the native ISOs as much as I can and the water is slowing down, okay. So it may not be as smooth here, but it's still a neat image. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take a couple more, um, moving, kind of getting, zooming in closer, moving out a little bit, changing the composure a little bit and see what we like best. Heading back to the car now because it's sleeting. On the way out, we got some black squirrel photos, but I'm gonna go back and edit, see what we got and let's go from there. 